Welcome back to EE Times TV. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief of EE Times. And we're here in San Diego, the 44th Design Automation Conference, and we're talking to Mike Kaskowitz, Senior Vice President of Semiconductor IP for the IP provider Mossaid. Mike. Hi, Brian. Um, thanks for taking the time. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on at Mossaid. You uh, came on board in August of, that is correct. of last year, and there's, there have been a lot of changes uh, in the business, in the management, uh, Absolutely. catch us up. Okay, well basically Mossade is the leader uh, in the new area of high performance configurable IP. So we have two main product families. One is our DDR2, which runs at up to 1066 megahertz in a 90 nanometer. And then we go, our DDR3 will come out in August, it's 1.6 gigahertz, which is faster because basically the DDR solutions in analog um, are capable of higher bandwidth than if it's a pure digital solution. We also have our PLL, which is very configurable and high performance. Now, MossAid historically has been around for 30 years and started in memories and then did networking chips and things like that. And so we have three main, historically we had three main businesses, a test systems business, a patent licensing business, and then our semiconductor IP business. And uh, recent changes, what we did in February was we decided to um, sell our systems business to Teradyne. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we um, exited one of our uh, product lines for IP, which was low power memories. And then we also um, acquired the patent rights to the Gear wire, um, wireless LAN patents, which was a big thing. So that was our big announcements in that area. Uh, more recently, uh, our board has decided that we really want to put a lot of our investment into the patent licensing business, so that's going to be a lot of our future in, uh, investment. While we look at alternatives for the semiconductor IP business, um, it's doing extremely well. We're growing pretty uh, rapidly. We grew over 100% last year. And so, you know, we're looking at alternatives that include, you know, divesting the business or not uh, from Mosse. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Right, so you, you have a new CEO as of this spring. That and is correct. I think he said um, uh, that everything's on the table as far as the exactly. fu future of the company. T talk a little bit about the competitive landscape in the memory IP business because it seems everyone and his mother has uh, some form of a memory core to sell. Right. Well, uh, basically, the, the, if you look at the current chips, they say about 90% um, of the chip is memory, on-chip memory, and then about 40% of the non-memory functions are outsourced IP. So we're seeing a big trend in on-chip memory as well as outsourced IP. Okay, and there are quite a few memory companies in the space. Uh, a lot of the non-volatile memory tends to be very um, custom designed in mm -hmm. nature. You know, so a lot of the I don't know that there's, a lot of the providers tend to be more customized or targeted for a foundry process or things like that. So more and more I think uh, you're seeing memories being tightly aligned with the foundries and that. Now from Mossade's perspective, Mossade owns some of the fundamental patents on embedding the memory. Right, so that's what right. they're licensing. They're actually not licensing the blocks themselves, they're licensing the technology rights to embedding memory. Okay, and then my group is actually doing DDR, so external memory interfaces, right. with high-speed DDR uh, interface, DDR2, DDR3. Okay, so um, so you're trying to trying to stay out of the the uh, the pricing mud fight um, that you know must exist in the exactly. embedded memory space. Yeah, exactly. We stay out of that because we're looking on the patent licensing, and then on, from a DDR space because it's analog mixed signal solution. There's a little bit more price support. Uh, a lot of the price erosion in IP for, um, you know, is in the soft digital portion where there's so much competition because the industry doesn't have a good way to necessarily assess. Yeah. And now the VSIA has done a great deal of stuff in the quality in QIP and that, but we're lacking in the industry kind of third-party assessment like the consumer reports that actually take the metric and score the various providers. Now in analog mixed signal you tend to have a more difficult hurdle so uh, more of the companies that are in the analog mixed signal space, because it's so expensive to get into the yeah. design, yeah. Uh, tend to be higher tier providers. There's a little bit more price stability. Now, um, you're, you're a classic been around the block guy. You've been where you're at Motorola, you're at Mentor, you're at VSIA, yes. you've been everywhere. <laughs> so you have a unique uh, perch from which to view the design automation industry. It seems to be, uh, 
I don't know, pick your phrase, in a world of hurt, uh, casting about for its future? How, how would you describe it? Well, I think um, the biggest challenge for EDA is that the pie hasn't grown. Okay, so I applaud what Mentor's actually doing, you know, where uh, Greg has done a wonderful job getting into the automotive space mm -hmm. and trying to add new spaces to EDA. Um, from an IP standpoint, I think we have a broken um, ecosystem to some degree in that it's very expensive to develop IP, yet the barrier to entry for a non-qualified provider, a very low-cost, no-name company to come in there and claim they have IP is pretty low. And so the valuations are being established by these low-end providers as opposed to what it truly takes to do a quality IP, you know, a reusable right. block of IP. And so we have to kind of work through that. I kind of equated to the automotive industry at the turn of the century where, you know, there was like 90-plus car, car manufacturers and then most of them went away. I think right now we're seeing a consolidation, a continued consolidation and aggregation of the IP industry as well as EDA uh, because... Um, it's got to kind of get in balance with what the prices will pay and how many suppliers there are for it. We've heard uh, the rumor this week about um, uh, Blackstone and KKR having an interest in uh, Cadence design systems. It's a $4 billion sector, e EDA. It seems to me that a, an industry that's that small would not be a logical place for a private equity play to happen. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, I know nothing about the cadence, uh, uh, the rumors that are there to really comment on it. Uh, but the one thing I think that's interesting is if the pie is more smaller and contained, it's actually probably not a bad idea to go private equity because, um, you know, sh public markets want continued performance, continued growth, things like that. And it's hard to deliver that if your overall market is yeah. kind of fixed. So it wouldn't surprise me to see some more privatization in EDA, uh, personally. But, you know, I, I have known nothing to comment on Cadence for. <laughs> Time will tell. We've been talking with Mike Kaskowitz, Senior Vice President of Semiconductor IP for Mossade here at the 44th Design Automation Conference. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, check back to our U YouTube channel for more E Times TV videos from the show floor.